On this episode of Ask Dan Windows to talk about what comes after the Windows 10 Creators update, whether or not the Surface 3 is still a good value, and should Xbox One S owners be worried about Project Scorpio? Stay tuned. If Surface Pro 5 came out, will Surface 3 be still worth it? So that's a really good question, but also a tough one to answer as we literally know nothing about a Surface Pro 5 or a Surface 5. But assuming there is, will that make the Surface 3 a better value or bargain? And that's an interesting question. Does Microsoft really reduce the prices a lot on these devices? So far, we haven't seen that happen too much. Microsoft does often hold sales and brings down the price by $200 or so, or maybe add a bundle into it, but they really haven't reduced prices all that much. Still, if you're on a budget looking for something, I think there are some better values out there for different types of tablets, but you may want to hold out for Surface 3 to see if it does come down in price, but I don't expect like bargain basement reduction. So just keep an eye out. We'll see what happens when Microsoft announces, if anything at all. What's next after Windows 10 Creators Update? So on April 11th, Microsoft is expected to begin rolling out the Creators Update, also known as Redstone 2. Now we already know that this fall Redstone 3 is gonna be coming out and I've heard around October for that one. That's also the same time as Xbox Scorpio, which will probably get its proper name at E3 in June, will also be hitting the market. So the fall is gonna be a big time. Now the question is, what is Redstone 3 going to focus on? There's been some rumors and basically fan wishes of it being called the mobility update. And I actually like that name a lot. There is no evidence, however, that is what it's gonna be called, but seeing as Redstone is when we'll see Windows 10 on ARM hit the mainstream, there may be something tied into that. That's when we expect to see basically Chromebooks running Windows 10 Cloud and Windows 10 on ARM. It's also expected this may be one of the last updates for Windows 10 Mobile before Microsoft really shifts gears and puts their Surface phone out. But that's a lot of speculation right now. We really don't know. Although I expect to hear more from Microsoft in May at their build conference, I do expect them to sort of tease Redstone 3 and show us a few new features that they're working on for the next year. But we have a few weeks out before we'll know. When Scorpio launches, what will happen to Xbox One and Xbox One S? All right, I like this question a lot because there's a lot of confusion here about what Project Scorpio is. First of all, I expect it to maybe be called Xbox One Pro. I realize that's a little bit boring of a name, but it does keep the continuity here, and that's the real important distinction. Xbox One and Xbox One S are not going away, but they're part of a continuum of devices. Scorpio is gonna be very expensive. I don't expect it to be super expensive, but it will be obviously more than Xbox One S. In other words, whatever you have with the Xbox One and One S, those are not being discontinued. Those OSs will be continued to update, and they're gonna match and look exactly like whatever Project Scorpio is gonna have. The only difference with Project Scorpio is it's going to be higher end hardware. It's going to support 4K out of the box and 4K gaming, and it will have some other little neat tricks. Otherwise, though, the operating system will be exactly the same. I'm ready to flip the switch on a premium Windows phone. There seems to be only two choices at the time, and it's the Elite X3 or the Idle 4S. Which do you recommend? All right, so first of all, welcome to the 1% Club. You're part of a very special group. As far as which phone you should get, it's always a tough question. The Alcatel Idle 4S is probably a better value. It's definitely cheaper than Elite X3. Now, I myself use the Elite X3 and like it a lot. My only issue with it, it's rather large and tough to fit into your pocket. I do, however, like the fingerprint scanner a lot better. Plus, you get that iris scanner, which I actually do use. In terms of cameras, they're both very similar. I would give the Elite X3 actually a little bit of an edge with the Auto 4S, you do get a dedicated camera button, and that's pretty cool. The one thing you do lose on the Auto 4S, though, of course, is going to be NFC, which if you don't use it, it's not a big deal. There's also no Qi wireless charging, which you do get with the Elite X3. So the Elite X3 is definitely a more well-rounded device, but it's more expensive. If money is no object, I would say go for the Elite X3. But if you want a more normal size phone, one that's easier to hold and type on, that can slip into your pocket easily, Get the Auto 4S. Just remember the Auto 4S, it's very delicate. It's made of glass and metal. That thing drops on pavement. It's going to shatter, it's going to dent, so maybe get a case for it. What are your thoughts on possible Android emulation for Windows 10 Cloud or Windows 10 on ARM for cellular PCs? 
Uh, the return of the old Astoria question. So for those who don't know, about two years ago, Microsoft announced Project Astoria. It's one of the bridges that they were allowing developers to use to bring apps to Windows 10 and Windows 10 Mobile. It allowed developers to recycle Android code to be used on Windows 10, and it was basically a port, so you can have Android apps run on your phone. It worked pretty well, but there apparently were some bugs, and a lot of developers, specifically Windows developers, were very unhappy with Microsoft for doing this, as they saw it as undermining Windows development. Microsoft canned the project and never really gave a full answer as to why. So the question is, does it make more sense now to bring it back? I would say maybe. All I know is there are no plans to bring it back. At least I'm not hearing anything, and every time I bring it up to Microsoft, they say it's basically dead. But the way Microsoft sees it, it's UWP or nothing. So I do not believe Android emulation will be coming to Windows 10 on ARM or Windows 10 for cloud. Now that would be nice to help bridge that gap for mobile. I just don't see it as a solution. So that does it for this episode. Remember, if you have a question, use hashtag AskDanWindows on Twitter or use our email AskDan at WindowsCentral.com and maybe we'll pick yours. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching. Take care, everybody. The noise is distracting me. Sorry. Just let me pause that. I'll do that. Right. Yeah. I'm ready to flip the switch on a premium Windows phone. There's. Oh my God. <laughs> so that does it for this week's. Nope. <laughs>